We have the privilege of sitting down here with Matt Dixon. Got to know Matt last year as I was transitioning away from the Mammoth group this last fall. Went to Matt to learn a little bit about recovery because I had overtrained for the Chicago Marathon, didn't make it to the start, was very disappointed, and that kind of helped me grasp or get a better grasp of recovery. What did you see in my case? When you first came to me, uh, you know, we, we sat down and reviewed your training program, and it was very clear that you were obviously fit, but in my mind you were tired. And that displayed itself in several ways, not, not just in your, your overall energy, but your ability to accept the training that you were doing. Maybe the particular sessions that you were doing were pretty good, but it seemed to me that you were overtired. And that's a very common thing for, um, for many endurance athletes, whether it's triathletes or runners. And so the process for you, I felt, was, was pretty simple to make improvements, which was to, uh, to take a step back and say, yes, you're working hard, but how do we make that hard work more effective? And so for us, we just decided to, uh, to make recovery a priority in your training versus just an afterthought that's something that's put in after the fact or when it's desperately needed sort of thing. Yeah, I remember one of the things you said that really struck me was you're saying, you know, we should use those last couple weeks of training not to recover and to get back to a recovered state, but rather to sharpen and to work on your speed. Because it totally captured kind of how I'd been feeling in my training, where I was training so hard, I was like, I just got to get to the taper so I can rest and my body can come back too. And you were really emphasized to me the point that we need to always operate in this recovered state. I think many people, as they come towards their main race, emotionally they, they have the, uh, the feeling of, I just can't wait for it to be over. And, and physically, I need to get to those last two weeks so that I can rest my way out of this hole. I view it that if you can maintain health throughout, your body is in a much better place to accept the hard work and to make that hard work more effective where you're going to elicit proper adaptations and get, and get faster. So the mission for you was, uh, was to actually use the things that you have as natural weapons, your speed and your specific speed that you can hold and extend it out to a marathon. So by proactively integrating recovery into your training, it would make your training more effective. And then as you come into the last two weeks, you can arrive in Boston, not just very fit, but fresh. And, and when you have that, you have the, the capacity, at least the potential to then go fast. And I think that that was the case uh, for you. So like, what are some of those proactive things? You know, how do we make sure we're always staying in that recovered state? I think the first thing is to, to make sure that you place equal value in those recovery blocks that you place in. So rather than training for X amount of days in a row until you get very, very tired, we try and place an integrate recovery in the same way as you would integrate speed, you would integrate the endurance run. So you actually place recovery into the program so that ultimately the output or the outcome is consistency. The key for the athlete or for the coach is to take a step back and really be honest with, are you actually feeling recovered? Or are you persuading yourself that you're ready because you're, you know that your friends and your competitors are out there doing the session, so I'm gonna do it at all costs. Yeah, yeah and you know, on that note, I know for myself when I was forcing myself to take rest sometimes when I didn't even feel like it. Like for example, I was training for Boston, I would take one day off every week, completely off, like no cross mm -hmm. training, nothing. And that was very difficult for me to do, it was very challenging. And I found that it required a lot of confidence on my part to be able to rest. Everybody talks about recovery. From, from the pro level, the elite level, all the way down to fitness enthusiasts, I think people cognitively understand that recovery is important and yet it's the thing that most motivated athletes hate to do. And the reason is, is that it gives you no validation for improvements. You know, there's nothing like a fantastic track session or a great long session where you really, you know, you, you break through and you feel great about yourself. And so most highly motivated athletes fear recovery. And when I work with athletes, and including yourself, when we talked about it, one of the things that you have to look at is not just what's right in front of you on that day, but where are you going? And so having a, a solid plan of progression is very important. And then understanding that performance comes not from what you do in any individual session, but what you accumulate through very consistent, effective training. So by placing recovery in there, and having a longer term vision at your training program, 
as you start to go through that process after a couple of cycles of training you start to realize wow well, my performance in my key sessions is improving my energy and how quickly I'm recovering from those key sessions is quicker and I'm realizing that basically I'm, I'm creating less peaks and less valleys and so what I'm creating is consistency and after a, after a certain period it's how did I ever not know this because once an athlete experiences recovery and, and what it can do to your overall energy and your performance in your key sessions it's very hard to turn back and, and ignore it. Yeah, I mean, I can certainly vouch for that. As I was training for Boston, I noticed a big difference from this year to previous years in that I felt much better on my recovery days. I was actually able to run faster. You mentioned even a mood being a sign of recovery. I was in a much better mood. It's funny because I wrote a book two years ago called Running With Joy, and it, it showed my training leading up to the race and what was going on in my head and heart all along the way. And I've had many people comment on the book and say, man, you are so up and down. You're like bipolar or something. Like the workout days, I'm like, I love running. And then the next day I'm jogging and not feeling good and hate running and don't want to do it anymore. And this year was just much more level. And as you mentioned, the workouts just kept getting better and better. And um, quality of life was a lot more enjoyable too. So recovery can uh, not only help you run faster, but can also just make you uh, enjoy life and day-to-day -day a little bit more. So Very thanks good. for your wisdom on that, man. No worries at all, Ryan. Appreciate it.